today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 44 to 56. A sombre reading, the death of Jesus on the cross, but with hints of hope all through, if you look carefully. The darkness may have been an eclipse or simply a threatening storm, but the point is that the light of the world was about to go out with Jesus' death. That sounds both tragic and final. But the curtain of the temple tore in two. This is a great sign of hope. The curtain separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple, and it shielded even the priests from the immediate presence of God. So it symbolised the separation between God and humankind, the holy God and sinners, a separation that had been in place since Adam and Eve were turned out of the garden. Tearing that curtain broke down the separation and opened the way through. Thus Jesus becomes the way, a way that we can follow to God. The centurion, a hardened Roman soldier on crucifixion duty, who would have seen and carried out hundreds of executions like this, would not have been easily impressed. So his words are extraordinary. Truly this man was innocent, or in Mark's version, truly this man was a son of God. Jesus died with prayer on his lips, and one can imagine how few people react in that way when being tortured to death. There are stories about this soldier later becoming a Christian, but of course we don't really know anything about what happened to him. Joseph comes along, a very different character, wealthy, influential, Jewish, but quietly disagreeing with the sentence of death, and gives Jesus' body a dignified burial, probably in his own tomb, instead of letting it be thrown onto the dung heap and left for the crows and jackals. And the women take note of where he was laid, a hint of what is to come. So the stage is set for the next act, and it's clear that there will be a next act. When it happens on the Sunday, and the tomb is found empty while the risen Jesus is encountered by various people, it becomes clear that not only is there indeed another act, but all that's gone before seems like just the prologue. The following chapter starts with the wonderful word, but. And it's dawn, the light returns. The mysterious figures in the tomb are dazzling bright. The light has come back into the world. And as John the evangelist said, the darkness has not overcome it. It's important to remember that because our world so often seems very dark indeed. And we may feel that there's little good, little light to be found anywhere. How must it have seemed to Jesus during those hours on the cross? But the curtain was torn in two. The tomb was found empty. That presence filled the frightened and bewildered disciples with courage and conviction and changed them into bold witnesses of the resurrection. That presence is with us still. And those of us who try to follow him are told to shine as lights in the world because the darkness will never overcome that light, that life.